Yes, yes. So today we are going to be looking at uh, UK garage baselines. So a couple of you have asked for this in the past and I think it would be a pretty cool one to do. And I'm going to look at different ways in which you can approach it. So um, we're going to look at some of the VST synths that you can use that are really good for this sort of sound. I'm going to talk to you about using preset packs because um, if you're not uh, fully um, geared up on synthesis, then that's a good place to start. I'm also going to talk about samples and how we can process them and how we can produce uh, some pretty cool bass lines by using filters and a bit of automation and samples. And I'm also going to look at a bit of sound design. So I'm going to look at how we can create some of the famous UK garage bass sounds ourselves and have something that's a bit more unique. So before we get started, I've got a just a simple loop here. So I'll just take you through the, the drums that I've got and then we're going to build some bass lines in it today. So let's have a listen. So it's just a really simple loop and we're not focusing on drums today, but I'm going to take you through it anyway, just so you can get a, an idea of how I'll put the loop together. So I've taken one shots from a few UK garage sample packs. Now I'm going to put a link under, underneath this video um, to where you can find some really good UK garage sample packs. But I mean, pretty much everywhere that you get your samples from places like loop masters and stuff we've got loads of garage samples there's tons out there but i'm going to just give you a, just a few of the ones that i've used in the past when i've been making stuff as audible and free um and then there's some pretty cool old school jungle packs as well which have got some really good sounds in i've mentioned a couple of them before but i'm also going to put a link to those below the video as well if you wanted to grab those so uh really simple kick pattern The kicks and garage don't tend to have too much bottom end because you're going to be leaving a lot of room then for your sub. It's very sub heavy, um, two step and, and speed garage and things like that. So you want to be making sure that the kick that you've got is nice and punchy and there's not too much low, low end kicking about. So this is quite a toppy kick. Um, I put a drum bus on there just so it cuts through a little bit. I've started using the drum bus quite a bit actually. It's a really cool tool if you just want to give a bit of punch to your drums. Um, and you can also push the transients a little bit in, with this uh, dial here if you turn it to the right. Uh, then we've also got the, the snare loop in there. So there's three different snares. I brought the velocities of the other ones down. They're, they're called ghost snares. You get them in drum and bass and, and garage and they just sort of fit to just glue the groove together. Uh, I've, on all of the drums, I've used like a 66% swing and 16ths. The MPC settings are really good as well if you've, uh, if you've got those in Ableton. I've got this hat layer over the top, so so again, I've got like, I think there's one, two, three different hats being used there. Nothing too crazy. Uh, these channels aren't being used, just get rid of those. Uh, we've got this pert loop as well, which I've got from a garage sample pack. Nice and swung, so it fit really well. And I've taken this brake loop from a, a 90s sample pack um, called, bear with me, Jungle Warfare. So in there, it's got a load of like jungle loops in it. But like, you'll be able to hear that actually, if you listen to some of my 0013 stuff, That's in step of that one. So it, it sounds pretty mad at 162, but if you drag it into the project, uh, it'll be in time. So that sits underneath in, in my track stepper. Now you can actually put it in complex pro mode. It doesn't sound as stretched. So that's all I've done here. I've just whacked a, a little brake loop in there and it just sort of sits underneath. I mean, then uh, what I like to use in garage, because the drums are quite sparse and spread out, 
and you haven't got like a, a really busy drum section um, like you have in house, it's good to fill in those spaces <coughs> with lots of atmosphere and things like effects. So what I've done, I've got these four effects channels, which are just little one shots from sample packs, really nothing too flashy. Um, and this one I've, I've just kept dry because it's like a crash. And there's already some reverb on it. Uh, but the others here, I've pushed it to this big reverb send that I've got set up. <coughs> so uh, it just sort of sort of feeds in to the beginning of the bar, that one. And then that's a crash at the beginning of the section. This is like a little one shot. Some reverb on it. Sounds pretty cool. And then we've got this. And uh, the, uh, the settings I've used are... Uh, here so it's actually got a delay and then it goes into a reverb afterwards which is just a h reverb um which i've sort of set up a little preset just so it's um set up a little setting on there so it sounds pretty pretty nice um and then i've also because like i've mentioned before it's quite sparse just to fill in the gap so it doesn't sound too dry in garage I, I like to have quite a bit of ambient noise um like this is from like just a recording from a shopping center that i've got from a from a sample pack it's just really low in the mix i mean you can barely hear it but if i take it out missing some of put that in just sort of fills the space a little bit um and then this crackle as well for the same reason really subtle but it gives it that old school you know, garage uh, vinyl feel to it. And then just uh, an MC vocal. And that's from a sample pack called Jungle Frenzy, um, which is a 90s sample CD made by the same company that make Jungle Warfare. There's some pretty cool, um, like, like towards the back end of it, there's some really cool, like, like uh, MC. Rewind, come again. And there's also lots of little one shots and stuff in there. So it's good to, to experiment and have a little look at sample packs like those. Zero G are really good for that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I've just got that little vocal in there. And that's it. So that's the... Um, that's the drums basically. So what we'll do now is we'll try and get some some samples in there. So the first thing that I'll show you is like, uh, if I just go into like all my garage packs here. So um, like the Loop Masters one's really good. Some of them come with bass one shots. So little bits like that. So there's there's a few ways that you can do um, you can use these samples. You could obviously like drag them in, and then you could go in and edit the audio if you want to drag drag them out and get something creative and interesting from doing that. But what you're doing then is you're kind of limiting yourself because you can't actually change the pitch very easily, and you can play with the, the semitones, but it's hard to know what pitch you're working at. So, say I wanted to use one of the other ones that isn't a C. I'm just going to drag it onto a MIDI channel like this. And what that does get rid of that. So, if I create a MIDI channel, drag it on, it will add it into a, a sampler like that. And then I can play. The notes on there which is good and i've obviously got my adsr controls like as if, if it was a synthesizer but there's one thing that we need to check because when we dragged that in it, it was in d sharp so if you go into the um audio effects here and you choose tuner and you drag a tuner after it if i was to then draw in what i tend to do is just like solo the track and then set a little loop going and just create like on the C, a few notes. Drag them out as much as possible. And then <clears throat> go and have a look at the tuner. So you can see 
that that C is not actually a C. So when we come to having things in key, it's going to be a little bit of a problem. So what we can then do, go into the sample window here, and <clears throat> it gives us some some options for uh, transposition here by semitones and also detune. So we so we can get it close with the transpose, and then we use the detune just to to fine tune it. So let's just keep that loop going. So we're at, we're at C there, and we want it to be hitting in the in the green ideally. So we are going to get some resonance as well. So it's not going to be bang accurate, but at least we know that we're in we're in C. So if I just play with the sense a little bit. See when the note starts, we're pretty much at C. So we've tuned that sample now. So just something to bear in mind is just to make sure that your samples are, are in key if you're using samples. Uh, so if we were to then start writing a little bass line in like that. Gonna just get the swing on there as well. So what I tend to do when I'm making garage bass lines is I'll stack loads of different ones on top of each other. So I quite like how that sounds. And then we can add in other things. Uh, another thing that you can do with like bass lines like this is if you go into the filters, dragging an auto filter on there, stuff like that. So I can actually draw that automation in just to give it a bit of movement. So if we go onto here, go to auto filter, go to frequency, and we just sort of draw in some sort of mad uh, filter sweep. You get like that garage want from doing this sort of thing so that's what we're looking for and you just get get different sounds each time do you know what i mean and there's no right or wrong way to do it it's just experimenting with uh with the filter so one little thing that you can do there. You could also do it with the with the LFO. We're going to look at LFOs. So uh, that's a pretty simple layer. So what else I'm going to do is add in a an instance of analog. And we'll do a quick bit of basic synthesis here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a sine wave on the, that oscillator and we're going to set a sine wave on this oscillator as well. We're going to separate it. So this one's going to be pitched up by an octave and we're also going to try pitching that down by five semitones here. Maybe we'll try... And we've got this garagey type bass line there where we've pitched it up by five semitones and up by an octave as well. So um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to play with this LFO a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to turn the LFO on. I'm going to turn the rate up. But then what we've got to do is go into the amp and actually tell the uh, synth which where we want to sync the LFO to, to, to modulate it. So if you do it with the level, that's going to do it with the volume. And that's how you get little wobbles like that. So um, I'm also going to just bring down the release a little bit. And I'm also going to go into this section and I'm going to just turn it into mono because obviously it's a bass line. We don't want the notes to be going into each other and overlapping. So 
uh, that's another little section we got there. And we can just copy that over. Get it on the right part of the beat there. Just make sure the swing's on the bass lines as well. So let's just experiment with the LFO a little bit. Speed it up a touch. And you can also, um, when, you, when you're in the LFO here, you can change it so it re-triggers at the beginning of every note. So it's going to be much smoother that way rather than it just being free and just going into the next note with the same LFO. So yeah, just a couple of little tips there that I've used in the past. So uh, what I want to do now is just show you a few VSTs that you can use to get really good garage sounds. So I'd say when it comes to VSTs, the one that I use the most has got to be massive um, because there's actually tons of preset packs out there for massive because it's a synth that's been around for so long. But also... Um, the modulation, the LFOs and things in it are really cool. So I usually get a preset and then tweak things afterwards. So as part of, I think this is from the, the Loop Masters one, but I will link this below this video. Um, there's just some wicked ones just straight out of the uh, Loop Masters preset pack here. So you've already got some really cool sounds in there. And then you can tweak the, the settings here. You can open the filter out. Phaser. Add some grit to it. Reverb. And obviously you go you can go in and change things here like the filter. Like the filter cut off and things like that. So we could add in extra elements from this massive bass line here. What I might do is just um, allow myself like a few gaps. So I'm going to take out, I'm going to put that there, I'm going to take this out and then I'm going to have something different happen here. Shorten that note a bit. Give that a bit of uh, this down. To... So yeah, you can just see how you can might yeah. If you keep that note in, and maybe we move this <coughs> this other note cross slightly and then bring some sort of filter automation in there on that one I might even add like just a little bit of saturation with satin on that um, on this analog one just to give it a bit of grit So just going back into Massive then, um, there's, there's lots of other sounds in this pack alone really that you can potentially use. Just 
at the end of the bar, maybe have that. So yeah, like I say, lots of different bass sounds all bouncing off each other is, is how I like to do things. Once you take that out, you don't want too many overlapping, but yeah, you've got something like this. So yeah, there's that there's that preset pack. There's also um, there's a few, there's loads that I've used in the past. Uh, Urban Arsenal is a good one. This one here, dark bass and resound from MassiveSynth.com. Let's just have a listen to some of these bad boys here. Like a, and you can actually assign LFOs to um, like the filter here. So you drag on the LFO from this global section here into there. And then as you, you drag that up and down to, to and that's like the LFO amount. Then you've got your rate. If you sync it, you can do it to 16th. Some really cool sounds. So for for that reason alone, it's worth having um, Massive if you don't have it already. This is this isn't Massive X. Obviously, this is the older version of Massive, which to be honest, I actually prefer. So there's that one. Um, <coughs> I've got to, there's these D, like drum and bass ones as well because. The sounds have a lot of crossover, so if you download a lot of like preset packs for um, like drum and bass, a lot of them will work in Garage as well. Could have that in like a different section here for example oops if i just copy that over and you're already getting like a little bit of um variation in the second section there so let's have a listen to how that sounds So yeah, Massive is a great one to go to, uh, go to and also I'll drag um, out some preset packs and some sample packs for you that you can use with Massive and stick them underneath the video. So another wicked little simp for garagey type sounds especially is um, Serum. It's by a company called Xfer, I think it's pronounced X-F-E-R. And there's a particular pack here that I'm using sounds from. That is called Test Press UK Garage. I'll link it as well in the in the description below. But if you go, it's the menu. You can load the presets wherever they wherever they're saved. So I've got all mine in this folder here. There's not just bass sounds in here, but we're just focusing on the bass stuff today. So if we were to just pick one of these bass sounds, let's just uh, go back in and see if we can find one that's tasty. And then I'll show you how the synth works. Quite sub of these, and then once something that's a bit more interesting. So something like that. So 
So let me take that out and record that in there. Just quantize that. Swing. So yeah, we're getting somewhere with this now, but basically, just to show you some of the, I mean, the main thing that you're going to want to be looking to, to work with here are your filters and your LFOs with these sorts of bass lines. So very similar layout to Massive. You can drag this onto the cutoff, for example, and then you've got this, which controls the amount of sweep that you're going to be modulating. You've got your rate down here. So if I was to go with one that was, uh, let's just create another instance of Serum. So I'm just going to copy that over just to show you really how you can tweak the bass lines a little bit. So I'll just drag out a note on this one. And um, get a loop going. And then find a sound that we can modulate uh, from one of those presets. So let's have a look at what we got in here. One. I mean, I don't know what any of these are. I look just look at the names of them. So. So let's try. If we set this filter here to just like a a low pass, and we get the this LFO here to control that cut off. Um, now we're going to want to sync it to the BPM. You can change like the wave shape of the LFO. Get some really interesting stuff. Pop a dubstepy that, but <laughs> you can sort of still use things like that in Garage. We'd say that. Shorten the note a little bit, maybe. Okay, so let's just set the loop up and see where we're at with things now. So yeah, just for the purpose of uh, of the tutorial, we've got just a nice little loop going on there. So yeah, Serum and Massive are really good. I've also done a few videos in the past on Sub Boom Bass, which is also excellent for garage bass lines and just bass lines in general, really. So um, let's have a little, just a quick look in this, really, because I've covered this one before. Uh, so just going again into the presets, the Sub Bass one's really good. If you can find this Rob Fabry um, preset pack online, there's some really nice Reese bass sounds in here, actually. And all the sounds are geared towards sort of garage tunes, really. Um, I was to just pick out, that's obviously not garage, but uh, if you go like some of the bassy ones. We pick up like a filter, uh, low pass, a lot of res resonance on there, but got the LFO here. So 
So um, again, it's just a really cool one to experiment with. It's also got a really cool sequencer, which I might do a separate video. And if, if you're interested in the sequencer in Subboo Bass, then let me know, because it's quite a powerful sequencer for bass lines, and I can do a little video on that. But um, I've, quite, I've mentioned it before, but particular presets that I like to use in here are the speed garage ones. Um, there's, I think there's two of them, both really good. You've got this, this re-space in here as well. Really nice amount of movement to that. You can change the LFO as well to make it a little bit more, get a bit more movement. So if I was to copy the drums over and you're going for a Reesey type bass line, that's a really good place to, to, to begin and then you can sort of tweak it to the to the sound you're after really. So I'm just going to record that in and then we can maybe uh, tweak it so I can show you what I mean. So re-space sounds are typical in garage and other forms of UK based music. I've actually got um, a Roland Juno 1 which was one of the first sort of machines that made these similar sort of sounds so things like your Reese bass and um, Hoover basses and things like that it's really good for radio sounds if you're looking for something hardware based that can make these sorts of sounds then that's a really good sense to use but do some modulation with the cutter So just by playing with the cut off and the resonance, you can give a bit of movement uh, to a bass line like that. Um, cool, so yeah, there's just a few VSTs. To be honest with you, it doesn't really matter what VST you're using. If, you, if you're doing sound design, um, you can get th these sorts of sounds from any synth. These are just some ones that I've used for making garage in the past. So what we're gonna look at now, is how you can create these sounds for yourself without using samples, without using preset packs. Right, so we're going to use Massive for this and we're going to just create like your typical garagey type bass line. So we've got this square, uh, we'll go with the square saw and I'm going to use the acid filter on this. Um, and I'm going to just pitch this down. Try it down by 24 which is two octaves. And I'm going to get the LFO to modulate the cutoff, and we want that to be we want that to be uh, affecting this particular oscillator. So I've just pulled the filter up to the top there. Let's go into the LFO here, sync that. Classic tube on this one. And uh, yeah, you just experiment with with that. So get in there, use use some square and sawtooth waves. Remember, you, you are looking to modulate things with an LFO. You're looking to get just that nice little wobble sound. And you do that through filters, basically. So that's one way that you can look at creating like a garage wobble type bass. I also wanted to show you this that I picked up from a tutorial a few years ago, actually. It's a really handy little plugin for making bass sounds. And this is one of the sounds that I've used in the past that's really cool. So 
The first thing that you want to do, you've got these two DCOs, which are your oscillators here. So they both need to be set to square. So if you set them both to square, then DCO2, you want to make sure that, that tunes at zero. And you also want to make sure that this range here is set to 16. And then you want to pull this fine tune all the way down. You want to pull the second oscillator up to the top like that. Pop the key follow up to 50. Make sure the mono mode's on. And you've got a sort of Reese style bass there. Control the cut off of the filter there. And then you can play with the envelope a little bit. chorus on it. So yeah, uh, and then obviously from there you can tweak things, experiment with different things, but that's um, just another way that you can come up with some garagey type bass lines. And we had a bit of Reese in there as well. So hopefully that's been useful. If you've got any questions, please fire them over in the Discord and I We'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Nice one.